Okay. What did I say? Just, I'm just in a fugue state, channeling the <laughs> divine to help people with macros. Okay. <clears throat> hey, it's Coach Josh. And if you're watching this video, then you've probably been in your 40s or 50s, you've been trying to get in shape, and it's not working. The old paleo or intermittent fasting or carnivore diet, the, the gains are not coming back, and you start to Google PubMed, what is wrong with me? And you might have come across the term anabolic resistance. Well, today, we're gonna break it down, what it is, what it does not mean, and of course, how to deal with it. Stay tuned. Hey, my name's Josh, and I am a proud veteran who has the honor to do fitness coaching for the United States Army, strongmen, athletes, power lifters, and even professional cuddlers, and everyone in between. And today, I help people overcome injuries, age, and the disease of conventional thinking to live their best life. Let's go. What is anabolic resistance? Now, it's a term that was originally used to describe geriatric and elderly patients who had suffered from a loss of mobility and, obviously because of their advanced age, a lower ability to build muscle. And it has become popularized mostly through the work of great doctors like Dr. Peter Atia and his book Outlive and his podcast The Drive, along with the um, neuroscientist Andrew Huberman. That's right. The cult leader slash neuroscientist podcaster Andrew Huberman. Now, the, it's really great that this information is getting disseminated all over the internet and of course all over the world, but it's actually a term for the phenomena that starts a lot earlier than your 80s or 90s. You don't have to be a septuagenarian to feel anabolic resistance. What happens is, as you enter your 30s and 40s, your efficiency to create new muscle, your ability to enter into protein synthesis, starts to decrease because of phenomenon known as the lutein, lutein threshold, threshold increases uh, because of that mechanism and because we often move less as we age, whether it's due to work, lifestyle, injuries, or just uh, Netflix accounts and the popularity of staying at home and spending time with your family. Now, whatever the reason, this kind of sandwich effect, you get smushed, your uh, ability to build muscle drops, right? You have to eat more protein to, to build the same amount of muscle. Your tolerance for calories is lowered. So just like a sandwich, we humans start to push out of the edges and start to get wider in the middle and a lot more susceptible to injury. And we have a hard time changing our metabolism as we age. It's good, good, it's good. But what are the consequences really of anabolic resistance? How does it manifest in your everyday life? If you're going through this, then what you might feel is you might feel hungry whether or not you have eaten. So be because a major portion of our satiety comes from having a satisfactory amount of protein, enough to keep us from preventing muscle loss, or, or to pre prevent muscle loss and to help us build more muscle, because we need more and more protein, the satiety hormones get harder and harder to find, which means that you eat the same thing you would have eaten a year ago and you're less satisfied with it. In fact, you're still hungry because your body's craving more protein to protect you from losing what you've got. So you're eating all the time, but you're not getting enough protein to keep the muscle so that the appetite continues, the weight increases. However, the metabolism does not adapt. Ah, shit. It actually gets worse from here. So you're hungry. It's harder to build muscle. It's easier to put on fat. You can actually make this situation a little bit worse. Example A, you start to get in a low calorie diet. And because you're on a low calorie diet, now what happens? Your appetite goes through the roof. And because you're probably not getting enough protein on your low calorie diet, or if you were, you'd be eating mostly protein. What happens is, that appetite goes through the roof, you're ravish, ravish, or ravishly, ra ravenously hungry all the time, and uh, you're fatigued because you're actually losing muscle and you're losing fat at the same time. So the fatigue goes through the roof. So you're exhausted, your sleep is affected, no bueno. I call that diet fatigue, uh, among many other things. And that becomes sarcopenia as we age, where we have uh, you know, muscle wasting, which is really, really not good. And you can 
you can compound this actually with GLP-1 drugs. Now, GLP-1 drugs work really well at suppressing appetite and causing weight loss, but because they use that exact same mechanism I was just describing, you actually lose muscle and you lose fat faster. So when, those, when you get off of those GLP-1 drugs, they have a limited amount of time that you can spend on them, you get your appetite returns with a vengeance with a much less robust metabolism because you've lost the muscle and also the systems that build the muscle have atrophied as well. Yikes, that is where we want to not live. We want to avoid that at all costs. So what do we do instead? The real conflict here is not protein, anabolic resistance, or your age. It's actually the definition that you already have for what is healthy for you. Because of anabolic resistance and the increasing lutein threshold, you're gonna to have to get a little bit more precise some of the time so that when you're going to eat your healthy breakfast, you make sure that if you're over the age of 35, for instance, you actually have 35 grams of protein or more. So you can bust out your food scale or you can just keep it in your head that that's about six egg whites worth of egg protein, about a cup and a half of Greek yogurt, give or take, depending on your brand, you might have to add a little bit of protein powder or some supplementation inside of that meal to make sure that you get exactly what you need. But if you make those subtle changes, you relearn what healthy is for you. It makes it easier to be successful day in, day out, year in, year out, so that your health span catches up with your lifespan. In conclusion, when it comes to anabolic resistance, the wise warrior uses the obstacle as the opportunity to learn a new skill. And in this case, it is the skill of being very precise with how much protein and how many calories you're eating in any given meal and any given day. And that's not so that you become a monk and weigh everything and never have alcohol, fun, or chocolate ever again, but instead to become really intentional with how you're living your life, how you're taking care of yourself so that you can create the excellent vitality, excellent health, excellent health span that you really want in order to bring forth the warrior within.